Welcome back. It's been nearly a year since I made a, a greenhouse video. Here in Denver, Colorado, we broke several all-time cold records in uh, October and November. So a warm greenhouse has definitely been on my mind. I started doing this about four years ago. I'm not really a prepper, but I wondered what would happen in our cold climate if society broke down. Would we be able to feed ourselves through the winter or will we starve? If you have the money to build a well-engineered, uh, well-insulated greenhouse and are willing to burn a lot of gas, it's not too difficult to keep it warm throughout the winter. My goal is different. I'm using inexpensive materials and passive methods, and I'm trying, I'm trying to achieve that same goal of a four-season greenhouse. I mainly experiment with geothermal and compost-based heating, and I can tell you it's really hard. I can confidently say that I'm getting six to eight weeks of season extension on either side, but I'm still a long way from a year-round year -round greenhouse. Still trying though. I refined last year's design for a combined geothermal and compost heated greenhouse. I'm calling it uh, Greenhouse 3.0 and I'll take you on a short tour. Here's a summary of last year's greenhouse heating system. As you can see, I built a lean-to greenhouse attached to my screened-in patio. I can access the greenhouse without trudging through the snow and mud, which is nice. The proximity to the house also improves heat retention. Attached to the greenhouse, I built a wooden structure. The lower part of that structure contains a GAT or ground air heat transfer system. If you subscribe to my channel, I've got many previous videos that show how the geothermal heating system works. The upper chamber contains a compost pile. With the help of a heat exchanger, I transfer heat from the core of the compost pile into the greenhouse. I've spent a lot of time and effort on considerably more complex gas systems in the past. The results were promising, but these systems have to be big relative to your greenhouse to provide significant heating. The most successful systems use a backhoe to bury hundreds of feet of flexible drain pipe. I don't have the ability to implement such a system, so I simply dug a hole in the ground about three feet deep and four feet on the sides and laid 25 feet of flexible tubing in a very ugly coil. I buried the tubing, but I have both ends extending into the greenhouse. So with a small duct fan, I can circulate air from the greenhouse through the tubing where it's warmed and then back into the greenhouse. Before I uh, buried the pipes with dirt, I put a layer of uh, scrap foam board on top to insulate. I left a small open space above the GAT chamber instead of filling it at the top with dirt. That open space is connected to the greenhouse. Because cold air is denser than warm air, the cold air on the floor of the greenhouse, that's the stuff that kills your plants, will tend to drop into this cold sink. It's not huge, but it definitely will help keep the greenhouse warm. Here's a view of the compost chamber. It's simply a wooden box about four feet on each side. It's made out of light one by three inch lumber. The box is lined with chicken wire. At the base, I have two heavy-duty plastic pans. I had some sheet metal laying around, so I cut strips of sheet metal and screwed it to the sides of the compost chamber. Now you'll see why I did that shortly. I cut one-inch foam board to neatly cover the sides of the compost chamber. Uh, you can cut this foam board with a serrated kitchen knife pretty easily. Then I cut sheets of a six mil polyethylene greenhouse sheet and uh, use neodymium magnets to hold the plastic sheeting onto the compost chamber. So last year I had a cumbersome tarp arrangement that covered the compost chamber. Uh, this year's arrangement allows me to remove the cover from one side of the compost chamber if I need to do maintenance rather than pulling off the entire tarp. And it looks, looks a bit better too. These magnets are, magnets are really strong, but I'm not sure if they're going to survive a windstorm. There's only one way to find out. So here's a view of the fully covered compost chamber. Uh, I bought a second batch of magnets, which is going to hold down the plastic more securely than what I'm showing here. <clears throat> Here's a view of last year's compost heat exchanger. It was just a long section of uh, flexible aluminum dryer duct with a duct fan. Air just blew inside in a closed loop. This design worked well for a couple of weeks, and then it mysteriously became uh, less effective. When I disassembled the system in the spring, a bunch of water poured out of the tube. Although I'd hoped that the system was airtight, there were probably some small leaks and the warm, humid air inside of the uh, compost uh, condensed in the bottom of the uh, duct and blocked the airflow, which basically made it useless. 
So this year, I'm going to use a rigid dryer duct, which is much stronger. I shaped the pipe into a U and then laid it on, on its side so that the vertical section of pipe is inside the core of the compost where the pile is its hottest. So rather than a closed loop, I'm, I'm going to leave the pipe open to the elements. Any condensation will harmlessly drip out of the pipe. Again, I could use a duct fan to circulate air through the pipe, uh, but I may be able to get away without using a fan since cold air will naturally be drawn into the lower pipe and then convect through the compost pile and out the top. Um, so lastly, I'm, I am going to cover the uh, uh, wall of the compost chamber here with plastic sheeting so that the greenhouse doesn't fill with uh, condensation. So to the few of you who've made it all the way to the end, I thank you. I'll be taking temperature readings inside and outside of this greenhouse as the winter progresses. So please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video. Thanks again.